Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad you could join us again tonight. Uh, tonight I'm going to try to answer the question, what can I do creative with leftovers? And um, I think we all have to deal with leftovers from time to time, especially since with Fred and me, there's just two of us. And I, most of my cooking is based on a houseful. So I have a lot of leftovers, and uh, some things, you know, you just can't make less of. So I try to be creative with freezing, and I try to be creative with leftovers. So tonight we're going to make an original recipe um, that I've sort of put together over a period of time. And we're going to see if you like it, um, if you like the idea of it. And it is a pork and cabbage pie or more specifically, it's pork and cabbage pies because they're little individual pies. Um, I've already made the pie crust for these and if you go back and look at my um, Jamaican meat pies, Jamaican meat patty recipe, you can see uh, how I make the crust on the basic buttery pie crust recipe, either one of those. Um, but we're just going to put together something that I think might be new for you. And if it's not, try it again anyway. It'll be good. So let's get cooking. Okay, our pork and cabbage pies, our ingredients in addition to the pie crust, it's our two cups of leftover pork roast. We had a Boston butt. We could never eat a whole Boston butt. Even with two meals already off of it, there's some left. And I'm determined not to waste any of it. So I finally chopped about two cups of this leftover pork roast. This is finely minced one apple. This is about, uh, this is finely minced cup of cabbage. This is one onion. I have here a cup of ham broth. Uh, but you can use any kind of broth you want. Don't, don't get hung up on chicken broth with chicken, beef broth with beef. You can use chicken broth in anything. It's a nice neutral flavor. Adds a really good flavor underpinning. Uh, but this is ham broth and that's what I'm going to use. And then I have here a half cup of breadcrumbs. Our spice, spice profile is cumin, jerk seasoning, and curry powder and we'll be mixing those together and hopefully we'll come up with something that you find pretty tasty to the stove. Well to begin making our pork and cabbage pies we're going to start with the filling and I have here just a couple tablespoons full of oil and it's getting hot now and we're going to start with our onion. And I have to tell you, this is a strong onion. I surely miss Vidalia's, but this time of year, I can't get Vidalia's. So this is a pretty strong onion. I know it brought tears to my eyes when I was cooking. And if you'll know, I generally start out with some of the aromatic flavors and let them sizzle to make a flavor base for most of the food that I cook. Generally, it's carrots, onions, and celery, but not tonight. This is a different flavor base. So I have the onions in, and I have here one chopped up apple. and about a cup of finely minced cabbage. And there's a piece that didn't get minced. And I know those are not your normal uh, flavors that you mix together for a base, but they are really yummy together. And I'm gonna let those sizzle until they start to turn translucent and weep and start to give up their flavors 
and then we'll come back with the next step. Okay, I'm stirring this around a little bit. And it's starting to get a little bit brown. It's getting translucent. I do want to see some little touches of brown. While it's cooking, I'll take the opportunity, as I normally do, to tell you, please pay no attention to the noises you hear. Uh, the little sound that sounds like a pig is not a pig. It's my dog. Uh, and he's always in his bed in the kitchen when I'm cooking. And there are people in and out, and there's always a lot of stuff going on. And machines running, and roosters crowing, and that sort of stuff. So, we've welcomed you into our home, noise and all, and we're glad to have you. So here we go. We're getting a little brown. And I'm going to add this two cups, which is about a pound, of chopped leftover pork roast. It was a Boston butt. It was lovely. Let it heat a little bit. Now this is going to be enough probably for a dozen meat pies. Uh, and, and I'll show you. I've already made the, the uh, crust. But it may be more than enough for 12. Um, and if so, I can um, freeze it and then make some more later. And it's also really just good to eat by itself. Okay, that's getting warm all the way through. Now I'm going to add a cup of broth. And as I said earlier, this is ham broth. You can use chicken broth. You can use pork broth. You can use whatever kind of broth you have. And if you don't have any broth made up ahead, because I, mean, I, I actually can 40 or 50 quarts of broth during the year, so I've almost always got canned broth. But, you know, use whatever kind of broth you have. Um, I am not going to add additional salt to this because I used ham broth and it is salty but uh, you want to taste it and at this point and see whether or not you want to add um, a little salt so I'm now going to add a teaspoonful of cumin seed ground cumin seed And I'm going to add a half teaspoon of curry. Curry powder. As I say, no salt at this point. We'll taste it when it's done. If it needs more salt, I can put more salt in. But with the ham broth, I doubt that it does. I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let it simmer a little while to soften the meat up and the vegetables because this is going into a folded pie crust. So let's give it about a 10 minute simmer and I'll come back. Well, here we are. I always know it's time to come and check because the smell calls me. And yes, this smells great.
Now the last ingredient I have here is breadcrumbs. And the purpose of the breadcrumbs is because since this is a pie filling and we want to keep all the juice, the flavor of all the juice, instead of draining off the juice, we add some breadcrumbs to soak it up. Now this is not going to need much because it's cooked. Pretty dry, and I don't mean the meat is dry, I just mean there's not a lot of broth swimming around in there. Okay, I'm going to taste it now to see if we need any more salt or any more spices. And it's hot. And you have the great complimentary taste of apples with pork. If you not tried apples with pork. Um, you really should. Okay. Going to talk with my mouth full now. I've turned this off. We're going to let it cool. And then we're going to make our little pies. And I'll show you that step next. Well, we're getting ready to assemble our pies. I have here the pie mixture. It's cooled enough for me to work with it. Uh, it's been about five minutes. I have here the uh, I have here the crust, uh, the pie crust that I made earlier. I have here about a tablespoon full of melted butter. Here, my cast iron uh, breakfast griddle and this is what I generally use to cook these on. So let's get started. Try to move things around so you can see. We're going to put a little flour here on our cutting board. I didn't get out my pastry cloth because I don't need to do any rolling or anything. Just enough flour to keep them from sticking. And these have been refrigerated so they're pretty firm. So we're going to put Sorry, we're going to brush the inside of them with butter. And you know, you can do this with egg white or a beaten egg. But we need to do something, number one, to soften up the, the crust just a little bit. And number two, so that they'll stick. And so the last time I made pies for you, I used beaten egg. And this time I'm using butter. Uh, either one works. So we want to put our filling in. You don't want to put so much um, that it seeps out the sides, but you want to put enough so that you have a nice full patty, a nice full pie. And press around. That's probably two tablespoons full of filling. And then take a, a fork and scallop all the way around or crimp all the way around. To make sure they stick together. And then trim any little bit because you want to have a nice circular pie, semicircular pie.
and then brush the top. With a little butter. This will help keep it soft, help it brown, add some flavor. So there you go. I'm actually going to cook four of these tonight and the rest of them I'm going to put in the freezer for a later meal. So this one pork roast, whoops, forgot the butter. It's going to end up giving us uh, two people, four meals. We've already had two meals off of it. Several meals. I have my oven on 350 preheating. And uh, I will cook these for about 25 minutes. Because basically all we're doing is making sure that the crust browns nicely. That's my oven. Sorry, gonna have to take a little of that out. They may not all need trimming. And let's butter this up a little bit. So we'll finish these off, cook them in the oven, and I'll come back and show you the end results. those are cooking. Let me take just a minute to show you what I do to freeze these. Um, because lots of folks like to have something quick and easy uh, for a, a meal when they're busy with other things. I put a little flour down. Now the ones that I'm going to freeze, I don't butter those. No butter, no egg uh, egg wash. Just a little flour. And I fold them. I do them individually. And when you get ready to cook this, then you just unfold it and lay it aluminum foil and all in the pan. Butter the top. Butter the top then, or do an egg wash, but uh, I think buttering is better when they've been frozen. And then cook it. What I normally do is let it sit out as my oven preheats, and by then it's thawed out enough uh, to cook. 
at 350 for about 25 minutes and this will make a nice quick meal for you either a quick lunch or dinner uh, and you can enjoy it several times well here you have it pork and cabbage pies these are hot right out of the oven and I'm gonna show you a little bit of what we've got here this is stuffed full of some really good stuff and here is my pineapple jerk sauce let's put just a little bit on here and this is very spicy those of you who like to kick it up a notch this kicks it up a notch I think I'm going to have to give this one a taste. It's pretty hot, so bear with me. Mm. If you're not used to the flavor profile of apples and cabbage and pork together, I recommend you give it a shot. It's a great mixture of flavors and when you add the pineapple jerk sauce, it's something truly unique. Please give it a shot. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. See you again tomorrow.